All right, everyone, time to return to Venezuela once again. Things uh, there haven't really quieted down for a few years, honestly. Uh, the National Assembly uh, got taken over some time ago by an opposition. They don't like Maduro. They were willing to tolerate him at first, and they're like, okay, well, political prisoners need to be released, and, you know, we need <laughs> so we introduce some sort of private market or something because we're having some problems, and, of course, Maduro uh, would never do that. Maduro would rather cast off his opponents as either U.S. puppets or evil capitalists that, like, uh, want to screw everybody. Meanwhile, like, 80% of the population of Venezuela is screwed. It's beginning to approach, like, Uganda levels or Rwanda or something like that in terms of human development. And that's actually, it's sad because their human development rose drastically in the Chavez years because oil prices were high and because no attempt was made to reinvest any of that uh, production in anything else in their economy. They remained oil reliant almost singularly. It's basically a monoculture economy. That's their fundamental issue. Not even so much socialism itself as a lack of proper planning you know, by the government. This is the problem with central planning, doesn't work. Bad decisions when they're made, they tend to be very, very bad as opposed to a free market uh, where any single bad decision, yeah, maybe it collapses part of the market. Somebody else comes along and fixes that when they have the capital to do so. It's sort of the uh, virtue of a free market situation. But uh, what's happening now is the National Assembly there, in theory, according to their constitution, is capable of getting rid of Maduro. It's capable of recalling some of these judges uh, that have attempted to brand the National Assembly as itself uh, uh, no longer uh, functioning, essentially, under the idea that, oh, well, you know, it's a coup attempt or something. In reality, the coup attempt is that Maduro and the courts, working in tandem, have sought to essentially remove what's left of the legislative power that's there. They held their referendum, and they decided to begin the process of getting rid of Maduro. Of course, like any other tin horn dictator in the world, Maduro didn't like this, so he decided to pull back the veil and say, oh, that's right, the legislature there doesn't even matter to me because I'm not going to listen to them. His new tactic is trying to deploy security forces sort of like a militarized police there to prevent the National Assembly from even meeting, knowing full well that they're going to sit there, the opposition, come to a decision, oh, these courts are uh, acting outside of constitutional capability, <clears throat> we are the legislative body, we are fully constitutionally empowered to recall these judges or censure them, we're fully empowered to remove Maduro, and the opposition there additionally is calling for the military to get involved, and at some point it, it might actually happen. Now, Maduro's security forces, his sort of bodyguard apparatus, can't stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Venezuelan military. They'd be far outnumbered, they'd be less well-equipped and so forth. Um, the problem being it'd be a lot of bloodshed and the military might not do that. The military might end up siding with Maduro because people who are sort of in the upper levels of the military, they're at least taken care of well enough so that they're not starving. You know, their family has toilet paper access which means extra currency, because a lot of people would rather wipe their ass with uh, that because it's actually worth less than the toilet paper rolls are. Uh, that's the problem with the centrally planned economy that's begun uh, late-stage breakdown signs, and that's really what it's about. It's about central planning. Uh, you can't blame just socialism itself. Central planning is simply an offshoot that happens to be in common with socialism or communism quite frequently, We've now got some degree of central planning interventionism in Western, formerly capitalistic economies, which is why they have problems. When people talk about late-stage capitalism, waha, socialism forever, now they don't seem to realize that that's not capitalism anymore. It's approaching a socialist situation. That's why it's breaking down. No, or it's approaching communism, some of the trappings uh, common to Marxist regimes, you know, their offshoots, the Stalins of the world, or, or Mao or something. Venezuela's got some problems, which is, uh, it's, uh, it would be amusing if there weren't so much suffering involved. You know, people are starving, the animals are starving, people are eating their pets. Uh, but the weird thing is, this is a country that not a few years ago was hailed as the standard of socialism by Salon and similar groups. It was hailed for its potential economic uh, might because it had so much oil and still does. And under that principle, if you're going based on their natural resources, Venezuela should at least be as wealthy as Saudi Arabia, probably richer, 
it should really resemble the UK or France in terms of development more than resembling any of its Latin American neighbors. Uh, it'd be like Brazil. Brazil, if it hadn't been pissing things away with Petrobras and all this crap, and if it focused on uh, investing into the right infrastructure, it would be a juggernaut. It'd be an extremely developed economy. Uh, but they have systemic problems with corruption. This is what sets apart nations that even in terms of resources might be less well off but still manage to prevail over time and nations that despite all the resources they're privy to have continuous problems. We have this in Africa. Part of that's like, you know, the Cecil Rhodes sort of stuff, <laughs> De Beers, uh, diamond mining or something, you know, the blood diamonds. Uh, but in terms of resources, some of these areas uh, do very well with very little other areas do very poorly with quite a lot. Venezuela falls into the latter category. They've got all the oil they could possibly want. Uh, that, uh, that one giant kind of brackish lake that they got, Mar Lake Marciabo, or I think it's called. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. It's, uh, it, there's so much oil underneath it, it could practically power the world's economies. And yet, the entire area is basically a dead zone of oil slick and occasional breakdowns of equipment used to extract it because it was never invested in. They didn't even make the investment into increasing the efficiency of further extraction, let alone invest into other aspects of the economy. That was Chavez's problem. That's, that's all on Chavez. Some people, they say, oh yeah, Chavez was a proper socialist. He did so well. Uh, Maduro's an asshole or something. He's a tin horn. Chavez would have done the same things under similar situations. He simply didn't have the foresight to see the oil prices collapsing. That's their problem. What people in uh, Venezuela really need to do is consider just getting rid of Maduro. Make, uh, make him disappear or something along those lines. He's, obvious, he's no longer a legitimate world leader. He's no longer really, he's certainly not an elected individual. He's at the very best, he's a dictator uh, or dictator light. And these same people that say, oh, go assassinate Bashar al-Assad, you know, for, for fighting a civil war, apparently have no problem with Maduro clinging to power, despite the fact that he's already essentially been recalled by his own legislature. He simply ignores them while sicking his troops on groups of unarmed civilians. That's not a, a proper uh, leader to respect. Now, I think somebody should get rid of him. And I think if the security forces keep defending him, the Venezuelan military should get involved. Otherwise, I'll, I'll tell the Venezuelans, anyone who might watch this channel, I know there is censorship in Venezuela, but somehow people manage to watch this material. You, you Hopefully the military does get involved, because otherwise some of these other Latin American states will get involved, and they will start extracting tribute in terms of oil uh, when in order to pay off the cost of their military maneuvers in liberating the people of Venezuela. Things will improve there, but it'd be a lot easier to just take care of it yourselves. Uh, the opposition will never be perfect. No opposition movement is. No matter how capitalistic they may be, there's still going to be corruption there. But you move to that kind of a market, your economy will over time improve. Socialism will be a trapping of the past. Um, it'll be forgotten because it doesn't work. South American styles of socialism don't work. Scandinavian model socialism, that's now held up as this, the new golden standard of socialism, only works because capitalistic elements created productivity for them to siphon in the first place. They built up massive wealth that's now being frittered away on social programs, welfare, and uh, refugee uh, housing and so forth in Scandinavia. Eventually that money will run out too. Now, Venezuela has every possible advantage, too. They should have the most money of any of these sort of uh, oil-based socialist economies because they got the most oil. An enormous amount. You've got more than Saudi Arabia. I think it's as much as, like, Saudi Arabia and Iraq combined uh, in proven oil reserves. You realize how much money that's worth? The, problem, the uh, second problem for Venezuela is that there's no peak oil. Oil, I believe that oil is produced um, by processes that are ongoing. It does, uh, it does get produced faster, perhaps under certain circumstances than some believe. I don't believe that, we're, that we've uh, started to run out of oil. But we have started to run out of demand for oil. And that's going to be a problem. It might shoot the price back up, but over the long term, oil will not win. Fossil fuel eventually will be completely displaced. It doesn't really matter what it's displaced by. Uh, increasing efficiency of other technologies is far outpacing the oil industry 
and it's a dying brand. Within a half a century or so, uh, Venezuela's oil might as well stay in the ground because it will no longer be particularly worth anything. It'll be something you sell to hobbyists on a small scale for $200 a barrel so they can power some old old style motorcycle or something they just want to smell the fumes something like it'll be nostalgic oil will literally be a type of nostalgia in the future the diesel punk uh, you know cosplayers or something like that and that's the truth uh, so venezuela has a limited amount of time to get its act together get rid of maduro and socialism uh, attempt to take the oil money they are making restructure their economy to invest in other things that will actually be more long-lasting to lift themselves out of poverty. You can become a first world nation very easily. You've got the capability. The money is already there sitting in the ground. It would require foreign investment. You're not going to get a penny of foreign investment as long as Maduro's there. So long as people as unstable as Maduro are running the country, no, no Western investor is going to pump a red cent into Venezuela. They might buy on the low and just assume the oil price rises and maybe they make a little return. It's a very risky thing to do. Very few people are going to do it. And Maduro is outright hostile to people from other countries anyway. He's even kind of hostile to, to like the Chinese or the Russians, let alone somebody with the money to actually invest from, the, from Europe or the United States. Doesn't get along with anybody. Thinks that they're all out to cut his throat. In reality, it's probably the Venezuelan military that's going to end up cutting his throat. Uh, you look at how bad things are there. The National Assembly has to arrive there before the sun rises in order to get past the security blockade, trying to keep them uh, from censoring all of these judges who have gone rogue and basically dissolved the National Assembly's power. Then it becomes a function of, uh, is the elected legislature or the appointed Maduro-esque judges uh, of which one has even the legal backing to fully operate. Well, the legislature does, obviously, because the judge's move uh, was clearly unlawful to begin with, but uh, that doesn't seem to be the way that Maduro and his security forces see it. They're the ones, of course, uh, with the ability to control that particular building. Rather sad situation. That's about all. Peace out.